Good evening, TDN listeners and viewers, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Interview. It's always a pleasure, always, always a pleasure to be with you on a Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when I get to experience this wonderful feeling of your attention and your company, but also I get to spend an hour, sometimes a little more than an hour, in the presence of pure brilliance. There are so many people that I have gotten to speak with and to interact with by virtue of the fact that I am the host of this week in interview. I would not, I don't know another um, role that will allow me such privilege and such honor. And so I, I really appreciate it. And I also love the fact that I can share those interactions with you. And so welcome again. Those of you who are my regular listeners, welcome for coming back. Welcome for staying with this week in interview. Welcome for your suggestions and your feedback. And we've been getting a lot of that, a lot of recommendations for our programs and shows. And I appreciate that so much. If tonight is the first time that you're listening to this week in interview, I would like to tell you welcome as well. It is indeed a, a supreme pleasure to have you here with us. Um, if you're in Dominica and you're probably listening to us or if on RVR Jams Radio on DigiPlay Channel 59, welcome to you. Or if you're viewing us on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, TDN Network One, um, on Facebook, it's on my Facebook page, it's on This Week in Interview Facebook page, um, it's on TDN Radio's Facebook page. Welcome. We also, for not everybody has Facebook. So you can find us on tdntv.net. So all of these, all of these um, various places you can find us. So I invite you to share the link. Call somebody who um, you you think might enjoy the, the the information that we give on this week in interview, and invite them to to join us. The more folks in your circle who get to experience this week in interview, the more you will have in common. Because I like to tell myself that what we do on this week in interview helps to shape your thought um, and therefore help to shape your perspective on life. Uh, we we also have you um, listeners in Toronto on SBE online radio uh, in, in Toronto. Welcome to you as well. And for all of you listeners, wherever you're listening to us around the world tonight, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, there's a couple of things that I, I would like to talk about. Of course, um, top of our minds as Caribbean people, most of us who are here tonight on this forum are of Caribbean heritage. And so we, one of our icons passed on. I wouldn't say we lost them because um, probably they just joined the spirit world. And, and therefore, they are more present than they were when they were here in the flesh. But um, Harry Belafonte uh, was uh, an icon by any measure of, 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 of that term. He, he was the first in so many um, really open doors for people of African heritage to access um, certain avenues in, in terms of acting, and in terms of movies, in terms of entertainment. And also he was an, a, a stalwart in the civil rights movement up to the time of his death. Um, he was involved in trying to help to sort through all that mess um, that is resulting from the continued racial um, treatment of black people in the United States and around the world. And he fought that fight brilliantly and we look forward to the new generation of, of, of Black icons, entertainers, sportsmen, uh, and businessmen who would see what he did and, uh, as, an, uh, as an example and use that, uh, him as a beacon where you can continue to represent the cause of humanity. And you know, the biggest cause right now is the, is the treatment of, of Black people of, Africa, of Africans all over the world, wherever they may reside. The world is definitely um, being destroyed because the full potential of Black people are not allowed to evolve. And therefore, 
that 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 brain bank, that brain thrust, the world is not benefiting from that. If no matter where you go in the world, in in, in the Western world, where a lot of the technology is happening, you will find that right at the leading edge, are Africans, um, our our intellectual capacity is being used. But but there's so many others who are locked up. It's similar to what's going on with women, for example. Um, we treating women as a lesser sex deprives us as a, as a society, as humanity, of the tremendous contributions that women can make if they were free to just exercise their right to think and to influence and to claim their space. I think it's even more so for Africans. So let's let's reflect on the life of Harry Belafonte and his what he stood for, what he fought for. Let's not just do platitudes and play songs and be nostalgic and then by next week we forget about him. Let's carry on his legacy of wanting to see justice for his people and let us do something about it. I always say that there's no reason for racism. If somebody wanted to not be racist or to do something about racism, they would just wake up tomorrow and say, I'm no longer racist. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as you just making a decision to understand, not only because you already understand it, that all of us are men and women, we are human beings and we should be treated as such. As such. As, as Haile Selassie said and repeated by Bob Marley, the color of our skin should have no more significance than the color of our eyes. All right, so, you know, um, rest in peace, um, Brother Belafonte. The other thing I wanted to bring to your attention before I go to my guest tonight is that um, about two um, Wednesdays ago, I had the Dominica... Um, Chess Federation on as as my guests. Remember, we had we had quite a few. I think we had five guests from the Dominica Chess Federation, and they were telling us of their accomplishments and their aspirations in reviving the game of chess in Dominica. And I hope a few of you have were influenced to take up the game. I hope a few of you have reached out to them and see how you can assist them in their ambitious undertaking. But I have I have good news for you. Um, you know there's the Alba games going on. The Alba games, uh, the Alba countries is almost like an OAS, but it's more I would like to say maybe a socialist or left leaning um, organization. Alba has Venezuela and, and Nicaragua and Dominica and and and, and so on, Latin America. Uh, they have annual games, the fifth annual games going on there right now. And one of the guests on my program, Mr. Nigel Francis, he he became the first Dominican to beat a Fide master in chess at the Alba Games. We know we have um, other folks from Dominica uh, who play chess and have achieved a um, certain status. But in those games, in the Alba Games, he became the first Dominican to defeat a FIDE master. Um, he, he was the top chess player from Dominica with a score of five over nine from nine rounds played. Five out of nine. So he played nine rounds, he got five points. Um, and Dr. Lyndon Ogis also got four out of nine. So the guys are doing good representation. They're making us proud. Congratulations to them and we wish them well. And hopefully that gives you an locomotive motivation and a little stirring to um to to support them. Find out about them, join them um, however you can, even if you're not located in Dominica, um, try to to find out more about their program. All right. So let that takes me as a nice segue into tonight's topic. My um, you know, chess is a thinking game. It's a game where you think strategy while you're trying to um, anticipate your opponent's strategy and to uh, and to take action against him. You as well are thinking about your own moves because it cannot be all defense. Uh, and so it's a game that encourages thought, serious thought um, and, and, and focused thought. And so... Why do I say that is a, a good segue into tonight's conversation? Because tonight's conversation is going to be a lot about how we think, okay? How we think, our ways of seeing things, what are the influences that, influ that, that, that determine how we think. My guest tonight is no stranger to 
this week in interview, he's been on a few times. I don't know if you remember my interviews with the author of the book, Calypso Drift. And then he came back on with Calypso Drift and Water. He's been on a few times following Calypso um, season in Dominica, talking about the state of Calypso and giving his own opinion as to how strong it is. Those books are, by the way, Calypso Drift and Calypso Drift on Water are almost um, encyclopedic in terms of the way that they connect um, the happenings that were going on at the time that those songs were written and really fleshing them out and unpacking the songs and, and their meaning and so on. So I, by now you should know that I am talking about none other than Steinberg Henry, except this time I have to say Dr. Steinberg Henry, because one of the reasons why we reached out to him and I invited him and he graciously agreed is because he just earned his PhD. He earned his PhD in educational studies, a specialization in human development and learning, the developmental learning from childhood to adulthood. And he focuses on the influence of, of well-being, um, of active imagination, and the ways of seeing, ways of seeing things, whether not necessarily with your eyes, um, but seeing in your mind and how what that influences the way you make decisions, the way you think, the way you perceive. And so um, before I step too far out, because that is not my field of expertise. Uh, let's bring the, the PhD on, and he will explain to us in more detail and more clearly, as only Steinberg can do, because you know we enjoy conversations with Steinberg. Um, so I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, no stranger to us, but for the first time I can say Dr. Steinberg Henry. Let's welcome him and welcome him back and, and congratulate him. Yes, well, thank you very much, Anthony. I gather you can see me and hear me clearly. I can see you and I can hear you clearly. Mm -hmm. So, so, so good. welcome, welcome. Well, very warm welcome well, it, to you. It has um, been a while. It has been a while, but we're giving you time to 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 <laughs> to, move, to move up two, three rounds on the ladder, and then you can come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, mm. let me say congratulations on your tremendous well, accomplishment. Well, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It has been an important adventure. Definitely. And, and although we don't want to dwell on it too much, I think I want to mention it now and then we come back to it later. The fact is that for those of those who do not know, those who may be getting introduced to you for the first time tonight, you have, uh, a, a, how, do you, how do you say it, a sight impair, impairment? Yes. Um, People say you have a sight impairment, you're visually impaired. Um, right. Some of us say we are blind and we're through with the matter. <laughs> right. Okay. So, but, but the point I want to bring across is that although you have that challenge of, of, of blindness, you are still able to sit down and complete a PhD. And we know mm -hmm. under the best circumstances, a PhD is no small feat. Yeah. And, and so I think it's triply so, um, you know, a commendation of your character and your perseverance, maybe stubbornness, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that you're able to stick to it yeah, yeah. And, um, and accomplish that. Let's spend a, a little bit of time and talk to us about your journey to this great, wonderful accomplishment. Yeah, that's a very important place to start. Um, one of my cousins called me recently and said, Stein, you know, we are very smart people. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, well, maybe, I hope that doesn't stop at the genetic, right? I <laughs> but um, yes, it was an important adventure, Anthony. It's been a while. Um, I Just before I take off on that, I really enjoy the fact that Dominica has such a large contingent in Venezuela. I didn't like the fact that um, Nicaragua beat them 14-1. <laughs> but you know, I, I I really enjoy what the boxer did and the Dominican boxer. So you know, it's just, it's very encouraging. Um, although they are losing certain events, games, but they are their spirits are very high because it's an opportunity for them to to learn. As relates to me, you know, it comes to learning and it catches my attention. As you say, I have a great interest in human development. I have a great interest in learning. I have a great interest in 
in, in, in broadcast media, have a great interest in documentaries and, you know, so those things still remain, still an author. As relates to um, this project, this PhD project, Anthony, I mean, after four and a half years, yes, today I was saying to my wife, you know, I don't even think people understand, well, I don't want to say it that way. It is not easily understood um, what has been achieved because we were t reflecting on a gentleman who had lost sight and he, he hid himself away and he stayed in the dark and he, he finally died. Well, everybody dies, but you know, sometimes you feel if somebody had taken a different action, it might have been different. And I was saying, boy, I wish I'd had that knowledge that I have now to be able to tell him, no, 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 no. It's not about giving up. It's about getting to know yourself and finding out who you are. So basically it, it is that, it is, it was an adventure, it's full of challenges, um, traveling. I mean, I had to, because of my visual limitation, I didn't want to walk through Hartsfield because Hartsfield is quite one of the busiest airports in the world. So I would get into a wheelchair. So I had to get past the notion that I wasn't quote, quote, cripple, what they call cripple, mm -hmm. and get into a wheelchair and have somebody, you know, push me along through the crowd, get me into the, the train, get to the elevator, you know, get to the plane. And um, when I got to the plane, I was well received. I, in fact, I felt very good. There was somebody there to help me, just to take me to my seat, make sure, you know, I was safe. And then when I got to Boston, came Boston, there was somebody there to meet me because that's where I did my residency. Leslie yeah. University is in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, so that's where I had to get to. And then when I was coming back, same thing. Then the challenges of leaving your family for the first time. You know, I remember when I was leaving, when my family, my wife told me when they saw, when my daughter and I and her saw me sort of disappear around the corner in the wheelchair, they just started to cry. Mm -hmm. Because I was stepping into a space that I had no idea about. And that's one of the first things. Is there something in, 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 in physics called the uncertainty principle? <laughs> well, but, but in a sense, it says that a body continues at rest or in a state of continuous motion in a straight line until acted upon by an external force. But of course, very That's beautiful. In, in, inertia, inertia. Yeah. Yes. And if I would conceive of myself as constantly being in communication within myself and within the environment that I am in, then the principle of uncertainty becomes an active principle and one that, that, that makes me curious, one that I enjoy. What's next? I get into a plane and I land that at Boston and my African friend is supposed to pick me up and I don't see her. So I say, wow, when I call her, I am told she, I'm not finding her. And then um, I get to her daughter and her daughter said, my mommy left her phone at home. So for <laughs> some reason, she, she forgot her phone <laughs> and I'm there trying to get in touch with her. So what did I do? I am in a wheelchair. I am outside um, American Airlines or was it? And I'm seated in a space just outside the departure lounge. Well, the section where people pick you up. Mm -hmm. And I decide, you know what, it's eight o'clock and I see this lady and I came in about 6.30. I got my coat out. It was, it was a sort of cold. I got my coat out. I got my stuff. I placed my computer somewhere close to me. I put my suitcase under my feet. I set up myself and I cover myself in that. And I decide, you know what, I'm going to sleep here. And then I just felt somebody you know, in the process of us, and then a lady came. Has anybody, so we had those things, but we mm -hmm. soon got going and um, driven to school. When I got to school, remember, I don't know the place and where I see it, it's blurred. So I can't say, well, this is a door in the distance. I have a little light perception, but you know, and then there's a gentleman, I heard Steinberg, because he saw my cane. 
Mm -hmm. And I said, hello. He said, I'm calling. I'm here to help you. I said, great. He said, are you ready? I said, what do I do? I said, let me just rest my finger on your shoulder. I rest my left hand on his right shoulder and we moved. I said, could you walk a little faster, please? (laughs) So we got right up. We got into the classroom. I sat down to the other students. I realized they were looking at me. I took off my bag and then plugged in my laptop, put on a little a little headphone and set it on on thrum. I was seated and ready. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the certain things I had to get over, traveling from one place to another. Right. The, right, uh, right. the other was um, the material and accessing the site. Because remember, I'm doing residency and I'm also doing online. It's a mixed, you know, mm-hmm. mixed method, so to speak. Right. A hybrid. And mm-hmm. yes, hybrid. And um, I have to access Blackboard so that I have to take a little time, get get to know how to move on this. I have to access the university site. Um, he's helping me to get it because it's the first time I have to learn to, because I work a lot with tabs and those sorts of things. and. Um, uh, you know, a lot of find list, checkbox, headers, and so, because I learned through hearing, because I have a screen reader which reads my entire page. So imagine, it's not only faith that comes by hearing, learning, learning also, hearing also produces learning. Right. And that was an intriguing, and then of course, notes, took my notes, because I could type very quickly as a secretary. Um, I had learned to type and been trained to type very quickly, so I didn't have to look at the screen. Because when my eyes began to give me trouble, I immediately joined a typing class, which was very, very, very wise. Very, at very the time. Uh-huh. forward looking, uh-huh. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. and so I got that skill. So the keyboard is the same. People ask, "Do you have a different keyboard?" No, no, no. My keyboard is just as yours. And I'll tell you something: if you're listening to me and you are a keyboard, if you look on your keyboard, I sure you never noticed that your J and your F keys have little buttons on them. Right. Now, blind people see that because their sense of touch reaches for things that are generally invisible. And that is drawn to them as a starting point for typing. So Mm -hmm. from there, they move out as a center to the rest of the, maybe sighted people I'm also a typist because I I learned to type formally. Um, ah. When I did my when I was my degree, I couldn't afford to mm-hmm. have, to pay anybody to type my papers, mm-hmm. and so I went to a local community college in the evenings and learned to type on a typewriter. And it's a great so thing. I, so I it... know exactly what you're talking about. You have two index fingers, one on the F and one on the J, and you mm-hmm. always, that's like a bump you feel for, and then you can know where every other key is from there. Oh, so even the sighted find it useful. Yes, and I mean it is. Well, the whole keyboard is my home. I learned shortcuts. I learned a lot of things. Um, even tonight, trying to connect, I had to decipher certain things, change my, my, my microphone settings, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I've learned those things mm-hmm. because I had to do those things pretty quickly. That challenge, challenge accessing Blackboard, different professors placed up their posts differently because they had to place in their, 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 their um, course outlines. And that I had to read through, download, save. I had learned how to create folders because I had a, 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 a tech assistant who had been um, trained and certified in JAWS screen reading techniques. So she taught me JAWS. She taught me how what, what, to operate. What is that, what is that name? JAWS? J-A? J-A-W-S, like, like the movie Fish. Mm-hmm, JAWS. Mm-hmm, J-A-W-S. Screen. JAWS screen readers. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm taking notes like that and letting the audience know because there may, I'm pretty sure there are some folks in the audience who have challenges with their vision. And so yeah. some of those things would be useful cues for them to start them off on a point of research. For what's well, I would, certainly like to, I would certainly like to speak. Um, hope I keep in mind that I speak to them, although it's generally um, all people. In fact, sighted people are using JAWS mm-hmm. um, because when you have when you have you know five three papers to read for the night each of them are 30 pages long every time you read 30 pages your eyes are tired you just you can just go about your make yourself a cup of tea while you listen or just rest back and use your ears instead 
Right. A lot, um, in fact, even Google and those places, they are carrying narrators. So a lot of people are using the audio, and it's a very good thing. We use audio books, but we don't use audio for in learning. In learning as much as should. It's very, yeah. very important that you use your ears, because some things begin to happen that, that are pretty unusual. How do you remember? How do you remember? Well, I remember through faith. Now that sounds a bit far-fetched. We probably might touch base to that again. And then um, the next thing was, next challenge I thought which was significant and probably the last one I'll mention was um, the books. Now, some people who are on vision pets say, but how do you read? Well, I listen. So for instance, I got a book, let us say, um, Educational Leadership. Um, it is 350 pages long. I purchase it at Amazon. And as soon as I purchase it, I send the invoice across to the disability services at Lesley University. And as long as I can give them indication of purchase, they immediately get the e-copy of the book for me, free. Mm, right. So I got e-copies of all books, all the articles that the professors placed on the website because they have 20 page, 30 page articles that was downloaded and, and sent to me by Disability Services at Leslie. Um, that, then deeper into that, there were problems with inconsistency. For instance, there is an APA style, American Psychological Association, which is used with Times Roman 12 um, for preparing papers at this level. Now, some people, when you reference their text, or their documents, use different referencing approaches and methods. Yeah, some, some may use Chicago, some may use Harvard, you know, mm -hmm. some use different. And so that created a problem. You find that sometimes I would go to Google, um, to let us say Google Scholar, and I would find a text that I want to read, or probably they have the PDF of it. I download that and I place it into my folder, let us say, on the methodology, because I want um, that document of 15 pages on methodology. But, but strangely enough, it, it, it's page numbering is something. Not only that, the references, are in some of them, they have block letters. Some of them use italics. Right. But, I, but my screen reader does not read bold. Neither does it, 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 would, it doesn't say bold. Um, it will just read. Mm -hmm. If it has caps, it, it would not say caps. So I remember I would copy the um, the source, you know, um, APA, and I would put Edmond C, um, the hierarchy of 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 of, of platonic desire, um, Chicago Press, you know, blah blah blah, nineteen seventy six or something like that. And sometimes when I copied, something is in bold or something is in caps, and I didn't see it. So I have a tech assistant, and she checks those things. You wouldn't believe once I submitted a 10 page paper and the whole paper was centered. <laughs> <laughs> and because I didn't see it was centered, mm -hmm. I just knew my screen reader is reading it. Mm -hmm. But when I do insert F, it gives me a sense of how the paper is out outlined. Oh, it's um, formatted. I, uh -huh. How it's formatted. That I should mm -hmm. have done. Um, you know, the, the, the indent of one inch as the case may be either below or towards the side. For people who work with papers and students, they will understand what I mean. But as soon as I got over those things, I was 95% safe. There were always matters that arose that were unexpected. You see, and those little things arose inconsistently, inconsistency with page numbering. But those were some of the things. In terms of time frames, I never had that trouble. Was I ever late? I was never late. Did they ever give me extra time? Never. You never required that. That's amazing. No, no, no. That's they amazing. never give me extra time. Mm -hmm. Never said it was time because you have a blah, blah, blah. We're going to give you a. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You had to meet two essays every week for three years. Right. And that was it. And so those were some of the... Um, what else? Did I ever... Well, I don't know. Probably I drank too much coffee or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Stenberg, I, 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 on behalf of the listeners, I am already telling you thank you for sharing this. Because this is inspirational on so many levels, right? 
Um, because it, what it says is that we all have challenges. And therefore, um, whatever the challenge is, we work through it and keep going forward. And, and, I, and I think that is the greatest inspiration in what you just said. But, but in addition to that, if you are listening to this program and you have a visual impairment or somebody you know has a visual impairment, contact us. And I will put you in touch with Stan because he just offered. He said he would love to speak with you um, to understand, and maybe he, he he might be able to to help you work out some of the some of the, some of that you mean that you may be having. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So some, one somebody, of my somebody saying use that very technique at university, completing my assignments. All your revision proved a valuable tool in retaining pertinent information on as the subject matter well i would i i would i think this is this is commendable i, I would watch the word retain if retain means remembering and what i noticed about learning through hearing mm -hmm. it, it entails understanding that you get a good comprehension of it you have to get a comprehension of it um, I don't know how I would remember through listening, although, um, but I had to immerse myself in, in the text. Right. Um, in the process. I, I, I mean, imagine you are reading. Be, be, you see, it, it takes us a little, a little way back. Mm -hmm. What were some of the early formative years? What were some of the things that, you know, were formed in you? A person has to always have an interest, and we are naturally made to learn um, from the time we are born. We are actually growing, and the moment you begin growth, whether it be stretching or expanding or increasing in 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 in, in your sense of understanding social, you know, cues or, or smiling or turning your eyes when you hear a little voice, learning has begun from the time a little child begins to creep. Uh, or, or, or stretches her arm to hold something or takes a step and forth. Learning has begun. Le learning uh, has started. Yeah. Yes, learning has Stein, started. Stein, so we've covered the the actual, um, you know, if you want, for want of a better word, mechanics of how you your journey was. Um, this is a good time for me to take a break to to say thank you to our sponsors. When we come back, we are, go we are going to talk about your subject matter and your areas of interest that are, that I'm sure you're even more um, mm -hmm. like, like Dominicans would say, oh, with with because because of their uh, rigor rigorous study, and and so listeners, if you joined us late, my guest tonight on this weekend interview is Dr. Steinberg Henry. He just got his PhD in educational studies um, and with a specialization in human development and learning, um, childhood to adulthood. And we, what influenced is our, our, our learning, uh, our, our active imagination, our well being, our ways of seeing things. I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, um, because we're going to shift the conversation ever so slightly. To, to, to examine those areas and to really go into the subject matter. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Presented by. So they cut. People say I've got a great smile. Well, I have to say, this is all thanks to the professional team at Beacon Dental Group right here in Dorchester, Massachusetts. I've got world class dental care. Beacon Dental Group has expert and caring staff dedicated to providing the most advanced and satisfactory treatment in all aspects of oral health. Their services are designed to meet your needs and give you a perfect smile, too. General checkups, cosmetic surgery, Gemini laser service, and advanced procedures, all in a state-of-the-art facility. Call or visit Beacon Dental Group today, 1026 Blue Hill Avenue, Dorchester, Massachusetts, or call 617-282-2146 for a smile that lights the world.
If you live in Canada, the U.S., and the U.K., and are looking for Dominica products including cocoa sticks, bay rum, coffee, soaps, crafts, and other popular Dominica items, then look no further. You can now shop on buydominicaonline.com, a secure, easy-to-navigate website selling a wide variety of Dominica-made and Dominica-inspired products. When you shop on buydominicaonline.com, you are helping to grow Dominica's economy. Go to buydominicaonline.com and enjoy home away from home. Looking to promote your business, engage current customers, and reach new people? Well, look no further. From the basic presentation to a fully-fledged advertisement, use your video ads to attract customers. At Man's Audiovisual Productions, we do just that. We produce videos for business and event promotions, product demo videos, animated explainer videos, fundraiser ads, and much, much more. Engage your clients and sell online. We customize the video to match your brand design. Guaranteed to play flawless on all devices, including smart TVs. Contact us at telephone number 203-690-4342 or 767-245-6238. Visit our website, mansaudiovisual.com. Or email us at derekvideo at gmail.com. Hello, my loves. My name is Naya, and I am a singer and songwriter straight from the motherland, Ghana. Make sure you don't miss this special, special interview. I will be live and in full effect on that set. The show starts at 7 p.m. Standard Eastern Time. 11 p.m. GMT. Dissect will be airing live on Island Therapy for YouTube, Facebook, TBNTV.net. So excited for you guys to see this special segment, so make sure you don't miss it. Welcome back, welcome back. Um, thanks for staying with us for the break. Thank you to our sponsors. Um, I get a lot of compliments on the flyers that I send out for the programs. Uh, I will tell you that they, they, they're made and they're designed and made by um, Man's Audiovisual. So you can check them out, Man's Audiovisual, for any need that you have for promotional material. And they also will come to your event and carry it live and record it and give you a production um as well so check them out um all the activities that's coming up check out um by dominiconline.com and of course we have um beacon dental health all right listeners so welcome back my guest tonight on this weekend interview is dr steinberg henry uh he he just earned his phd in educational studies focusing on on learning developmental learning uh, from childhood to adulthood um then welcome welcome back um for sure um uh, I, I i you have so, you have something playing in the background that's a little loud is it possible to turn the volume just, down a little just, bit? just a minute let me just check that all right all right so listeners as as before the break you and we we spoke about um Steinberg being able to get his great accomplishment, even if he had some challenges with his sight. And he told us how he got around that. And once he was able to get uh, past them and to find ways of dealing with them, he's, he, he then became just another student who had to persevere and to do all his assignments and so on. So, um, but right now, as we, on the second half of the program, I would really like to um, engage um, Dr. Stein, in, in in the subject area of your studies, uh, I know you, you, you your life is not just starting now that you have a PhD. Um, it, in addition to the education comes your whole life experience as well. But, but talk to us about developmental learning. Um, I know we have, it, it's a long topic. <laughs> we have just a few minutes, but the best as you can. Um, 
from, from childhood to adulthood, what, in, what factors influence our way of thinking, our way of learning? I think um, the good old family, mm -hmm. the good old family, whether it is nuclear or extended, mm -hmm. whether mother and father married or mother and father apart and auntie, grandmother living in the same house with mother and child and father visit. Um, I think it is strange that we, we never really thought of it, but how we grew up, our, our attendance to social events going to, well, you know, a Sunday school event, a, a, a little teenage pageant, a dance party, a, a group somewhere. Those little things help shape who we are, how we relate to class. And always the learning things that we did. Um, it's one thing to have fun. Children have to play. We have to allow children to play because it is their work. It is their means of learning. Um, they usually have their own law at a certain age, up till two, three, one, two, three years. Children don't know, you know, what is right and wrong. They just say any damn thing, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. so they, 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 they sort of live in that world of absence of any sort of ego, um, any sort of mid ground. But what it, it's human development. What is interesting, you know, the Bible writes somewhere that the child is father of the man or woman. Um, it didn't say woman, but I'm putting woman in. Um, but interestingly, what that means is that the things you learn, some people say between zero and five, others say between zero and seven. Mark you, these things last right through your life. And they are, you know, boys play. People learn moral judgment when they are 11 and 12 years through games. It's my turn. It's not your turn. It's your turn. I win. You win. People learn to obey the rules of a game. And so that sets the stage for a lot of things in their future life. So father-mother relations. I've been making a special pitch since I started my advocacy to fathers to look after their teenage sons and daughters, because between the ages of 13 and 19, a lot happens. And even if the father is not the intellectual kind, even if the father cannot do the math, uh, and you know, the, the artificial intelligence or the accounts or, 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 you know, or navigate, you know, Google, but you can have conversations, you all can do things and make things together. And what that impacts not only the very ability of the child to communicate and to have intelligent conversations, but it's also intelligently, it also importantly impacts the child's brain structure, and the growth and development of the child's limbic system. Just imagine a father can play with his little boy, he can lift him up, he can stretch him, a lot of things happen. So I believe in Today in Dominica, you know, we've been talking about maintenance of children and all those things, uh, and child and mother, parent, father, child relationship. And I've been saying, you know what, even if the father doesn't have the money, men don't feel ashamed, still go and check your youth. But right through, right through old age, and people get to that age where they begin to want to play again. They begin to want to tap again. Their hands become important. So that is... That is also something um, you have young people between the ages of, of 30, young adults between 30 and 40 years who are saying, boy, I don't know what's happening now, but everything, nothing I pray for happening. Mm -hmm. People are losing a sense of something. What is happening to you between that age? What is going on? So a little reflection like that is always, is always helpful. Um, but particularly, we have to take care of the children when they are developing between the ages of zero and seven. And we have to, every age, because the story I gave, my father left my mother's house when I was four years. And he went to live in his village. My mother and father were not married. When I left high school at 18 years, my mother told me, go look for your father. I went to look for my father. And that was the greatest thing that I ever did in my whole life. From the time I met him, he was a village historian, anthropologist. The rest is intellectual bliss. 
So you see, and I say not everybody was like my father in that trend, French trained, you know, speaking French, blah, blah, blah. But have that kind of ability to teach and guide a child. Fathers, you can help build your children's imagination. I'm not speaking to the mothers because the mothers always, boy, they've worked. I was just about to ask you what's special about the father, what, what, what role the mother is going to play. I speak, yeah. to, I speak to them because they have not always been responsible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, so, want so I, I guess what I'm asking up. is, what I'm asking is, is, is the interaction of the mother is it significantly different from the interaction with the father? Yeah, well, in certain societies, fathers even hold their children more than mothers. But in our mm. culture, we find it very strange that a father should be at home holding a baby. You holding baby, man, you're at home. Have to <laughs> but um, no, the interaction it can never be. It's it's particularly different. Mm -hmm. um, the breastfeeding, you know, all those sorts of things. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first smile, men have that. It's just that I think mothers deal with the development of the child in, 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 a, in a social, you know, so men have a certain, I think a father's responsibility um, for his child is spiritual. Mm. And that has slowly slipped out of our social conversation. Um, you know, oh. even in... Mm -hmm. What what I hear you say from zero to seven is that we have to be particularly careful and deliberate if we can about the experiences apart from the go play on your own, but in our in our part of where we want to control and shape, for example, we have to be particularly careful what experiences and how the kids experience stuff because that helps early foundation in their brain development. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, well, it does, um, mm -hmm. essentially. And uh, for instance, when I was growing up, there were certain things I couldn't ask. Um, my eight-year-old recently asked me, Papa, how did I get into my, my mommy's belly? Mm -hmm. So I tell him, okay, let's go on the journey. Human, you know, biology, everything. I give him the whole story. They tell me, Stan, it was rural, but he understood. Mm -hmm. And his mother told him, please do not go to school and say that <laughs> <laughs> you know, we still but, have we still have that kind of sensibility around. Yeah, yeah sensibility. Mm -hmm. But remember, there, there there were certain things that um, conversations that children held. I'm not saying this is a different time. Children are making decisions with their smartphones. Children are moving and selecting. Children are being influenced by algorithms. Children are moving to raising different issues. The key thing is is there is that world that is out there, that significantly, that keeps changing significantly, that we will not stop. Nobody stops technology. <laughs> but what we can do is to teach. There are certain things that we can teach a child. It's still good to, 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 to tell a child to say thank you. Um, Thanksgiving has a way of impacting the human mind, surprisingly, um, that um, produces certain hormones within the brain that Im that goes into the bloodstream. You see, just as how dopamine in a very mm -hmm. after a very good exercise gives you a certain sense of calm. Right. So there are certain things we can teach children that our parents taught us, which we wondered why they would. Now we look back on it, we found those things were pretty helpful. How to respect people, how to take your turn to speak. Um, you know those kinds of things, which which really help ch children to grow. But more particularly. Um, reading for them, you know, exposing them to how just children drawing, children drawing, children doing things. Um, I remembered when I did the documentary Plays the Child's Work, one of the um, participants in the documentary, Violin Hazel, told me, play is the child's work. She said, when a child plays, that is how they learn. They learn speciality. Speciality is significant to the visual impaired. They mm -hmm. learned mobility skills, they learn how to navigate, they learn a sense of self, they learn the difference when they play with sand, they know the difference between what is heavy, what is light, they know what falls when it's held, they know water cannot be held in the hand, you know, that they, they, they cannot pick up water as if they have a cup, they learn what is inside, they learn what, but those things, when a person becomes blind, for instance, and you get blind at 21 years or 25 years as an adult, 
somehow you have to navigate a space, but it was a space that you remembered. You see, because you can't see it anymore, but you have mm -hmm. to remember where your door is, where the handle is, where your cups are, where your forks are, where your towel is. You know? So you have to remember that. And so memory, that's why memory is so significant. How do you build those things? So we can help by telling and how, stories. And how do you learn how to remember, I guess? Um. <laughs> well, how, yeah, this is, a very, this is a very important question. People, memory is said to have a very close relationship with imagination. Mm. So for instance, when a child is growing, or the more we can allow ourselves to imagine, Sometimes we can get too serious about things and not allow ourselves to, you know what they used to call daydream a bit, and they say, but stop daydreaming, mm, you know. Skylarking. Uh, sky, <laughs> well, skylarking sounded to me like it was a stroll, you know, where you went somewhere, you didn't, but, yeah. but that is part of the mobility. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, memory is very closely linked with imagination. Mm. Any spatial exercise, any musical exercise, any dancing exercise, anything that involves creating things from scratch, putting things together to form shapes, you know, anything that ex storytelling, you know, and they don't have to make sense. I tell a child four plus four, the child say four plus four is nine. I say, whoa, that's interesting. Four plus four is nine. Let's check it, four plus four. One, two, three, four, plus one, two, three, four. Now let's check that. So you put nine over here. Let's check this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How much is it? Eight. Oh, put eight just below the nine. This is nine. This is eight. You were not wrong, were you? Hmm. One below. So in a sense, the child's mistake. It's a learning moment. Ah, you got mm. it, Anthony. Right, right, right. Now remember when they, you remember no. when they used to be <laughs> the only thing I wanted to say is that you 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 place a lot of emphasis on on a child, but would some of the same things apply to adults who are in new things as well? Well, the, the, the only trouble with adults is if they stop learning. They stop learning, or if they stop if, learning. <laughs> if they stop learning, okay. there, there is one gentleman who had studied adults well. His name was Eric Erickson. A lot of people who read psychology know him. Mm -hmm. He speaks. He speaks, speaks about adults being a, in a stage of stagnation and generativity, and an adult can settle down. You see, an adult can become satisfied. Not the young adults between between twenty and forty years who become very restless when they're looking for something, mm -hmm. but anytime past that, they can settle down into a state of um, you know, either they're very productive or they're very just let it happen. And that, I think, is where learning comes in. Some people stop learning. Mm -hmm. And what part of my advocacy and my work around the world where I go is to say, how do we keep learning? Do we read? Do we go to concerts? Do we go to museums? Do we continue to design things? Do we make things? Learning is not necessarily in schools. It doesn't always happen in schools. It happens in your everyday life. It happens while you walk. It happens while you talk. It happens while you speak. It happens when you meet friends. Are you able to always say at the end of the day, isn't it beautiful that we pray that way? We get to the end of the day, say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, whatever. But it's, that is what, thank you for what we've learned. Thank you for what we've achieved. And I think that is the greatest matter. Adults do need to understand that um, they're in a changing world. And sometimes in the process of work, technology change. Mm -hmm. And so they have to face that challenge of adapting to. I heard Angela, Angela Davis say something very beautiful recently. They asked her, what would you have to say to the youth? What 
message would you have to say to the youth, give to the youth? And she said, unfortunately, I have nothing to say to them. I'm following them. Wow. <laughs> and I stepped back a while from that conversation, went into my reflection meditation mode and thought, what was she saying? She was not saying that she did not contribute to the advancement. She was saying she allowed them to determine what it was. But she's in their midst. A few things are happening. One, at the spiritual level, she's among them. Mm -hmm. And just her presence is enough. At the mental level, she's listening to them. And just in case they ask her a question, she may just say, well, what do you think? She may throw back the question at them. Right. Just to draw out of them. But her presence, they may request from her a summary of what they said. But never does she leave. Emotionally, she smiles with them. She laughs with them. She encourages them when they cannot find a solution. But she never leads them. She lets them become the leaders. Right. And you I know, think it's... Mm -hmm. You know, when you said that, my immediate interpretation was eternal youth. <laughs> yes, it is. Because if you're always putting yourself, not, not back in a negative sense, but you're always going to their back and watching what they do with a sense of learning from them, it's like you make yourself young again. Young again. But because invariably, even the brain responds to it. As you get into joyful situations, they, they, it is said that the brain is a social organ. Mm -hmm. It works better when people come together. It's very strange. And it, it is a beautiful thing that, he, he, here it is. Active imagination is about immersion into the cell. It's a kind of meditation. Mm -hmm. But it's a meditation to find what? It's a meditation to tap into the conscious, what we call in the Western world, the ego, mm -hmm. and to tap into the collective unconscious, which is a deeper layer of awareness. But that deeper level of awareness, the meditation people have found it long, they call it consciousness in the fullest sense. It is a place that is as old as the human race, but it is still in us today. What does this mean? It means that every human being has vast potential as old as the human race in their biology, in their mm. very anatomy and physiology. So we have a very, put it this way, we have a very fascinating technology inside of us. It's a very ancient technology and it is Part of it is the brain, part of it is the body. And when the two are combined, mind-body interaction is what is emerging now in learning. All of the major companies, tech companies in the world, before they start to work, they have a meditation into mindfulness because everybody's realizing, Anthony, that mind and body cannot be separated. Coherent, so that right? is, Yes, that is a coherence that is becoming huge. And interestingly, when adults, imagine what they call image making where they are allowed to imagine colors and all those things as part of organizational experiments it increases their heart rate coherence from measure so mm -hmm. imagination is what i am advancing it is emerging in education it is becoming albert einstein said he doesn't know he would have done anything without imagination but it was sort of subsumed, pushed under for the last, let us say, 100 years or so. We had a few poets coming out, but now it's returning, not as a fancy thing for poets or as a thing for just what they call artists who like to do abstract paintings, but as an integral core dimension of the human neurological system. So there is a core network that is within the brain that shows a, a close relation or connect work from which memory and imagination emerge. Right. 
So from the moment you imagine, it enhances memory. And how else is memory enhanced? By sharing. So there is an autonomous self-development element in it. This is where the well-being comes in. But there's also a relatedness element. And what is that relatedness element? I could get all the thought I want and all the education I want and all the learning I want and you could become anything. But do you share with someone? It's a very strange thing. Let's we really pack our West there on self mm -hmm. I think it is in the process of sharing that people begin to advance memory. It's very, very important I, to mention. I, I was always told that um, by my teachers and mentors that the only way to prove to yourself and to others that you truly understand a concept is to be able to teach it to somebody else. But of course. To share it to somebody else. With somebody else. Yeah. That is where the hearing through learning or learning through hearing phenomenon emerges. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the ability to have conversations. Um, because obviously, I mean, <laughs> there are some, as you say, we are thinkers. There are some things that are happening here. For instance, you and I are speaking. And it always amazes me, you know, Anthony, that um, if if I were to split you open or <laughs> surgically, I would not find word one word you ever spoke. Right. A, a, a word doesn't seem to have an anatomy. A word doesn't seem to have a body. If somebody was to do the same, they wouldn't find it. It comes on breath. Where does it come from? What forms it? What is mind? And when you're ready to retrieve the word, where do you go to retrieve it? <laughs> where do you go to retrieve the word? And how does it form right? itself? Oh, how does it form itself so well? No, every language has a thought process. So here, here, how beautiful we are as human beings, all of us. So all those who say they're not smart, they cannot get ready. You can do anything. Anything. Definitely. Here is it. You have a body. It it functions, except if you are sick or, or unwell, then it's grievous and it's hard and it it, it works against. But I say you're well, generally well. You, you you have a body, but you also have a mind. No, I, I need to go back a little. I was influenced a lot by my father's thinking. So the first question he asked me as he's 18 year old was, what is faith? And I said, what is faith? I didn't know. So he sent me to read the book of Hebrews. So I found out faith is a substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not yet seen. And then his second question he asked me was, what is mind? And I didn't know. And he said, for starters, mind is a composition of thoughts. Hmm. Now stop with me. Which one of you listening to me does not have thoughts? And as long as you have thoughts, you have an active mind. Right. Now, what is needed here? You have to have another dimension to mind. You have to have will. And then you know what is will? Um, what, what is will? Can you give me a definition? <laughs> <laughs> you know, your, your will is your ability to, to maintain your attention. To do something. On, it's, it's, on what, on what yes. you want to do, what you decide. What, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. Find something that you want to do and stay with it. Right. It, it is, and after a while, what begins to happen? Because a, a, young, a lot of young adults become impatient. Teenagers get impatient. You know, a lot of people will tell you, eh, take it easy, wait a while, take it easy. <laughs> but sometimes will seems to have stages. No, you, you you're not getting it right away, but you, you have to you have to stay at it because as you press on yourself yourself begins to unfold and unfold and unfold until one day crack something clicks because will plus mind equals soul. Will, you, will plus mind equals mind soul. Mind equals, mm -hmm. but you do not just get there. Mm -hmm. Because your soul is full of emotion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. What is that soul? It is doing things 
that are wholesome, but there's a goodness about it. Oh, there is wonderful, but what is faith? Where you bring it in? It's like stepping out, not quite knowing what is going to happen, but taking a chance anyway. Well, having and the confidence that no matter what it is, you, you will have what you need to deal with it. Could you imagine a blind person with a cane? How, what is the next step? Is there going to be a drop? Is there glass? You see, so those are some of the, those are some of the small lessons that I think we, 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 we learn along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and people, but of course, the same way I could feed my body, I take a little soup, I take a little juice, I eat something, I like vegetables, I like a piece of chicken, I don't know. It's the same way you want to have little things that give your thoughts some energy. Mm -hmm. Right. So do you read? Um, what do you read? Do you read a wide variety of things? Do you always, because if you were to read language alone, if you were to do language alone, you probably would exercise, let us say, what they call the left side of the brain. If you were to develop an interest in music or creativity, you might develop cutting things, making things. You might develop the right side of your brain. You might develop a, a love for numbers. Let's say you begin to add things. If you love to reason and logic, but what if you like autobiographical thought? What if you like to move over landscape in forests and walk in nature? What happened? Hmm. You, you, you are enhancing an ancient part of the brain stem, the muscular system, the, the, you know, the more. So what are those things? If you decide to, to, to write out your, your, your dream, are you exercising your prefrontal cortex, as they call it, your prefrontal lobe? Are you doing a lot of different things like that? What is happening is, is there a, a thing that says you would know that nature abhors a vacuum? There's something like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Work, Khalil Gibran, the Lebanese poet, says, work is love made visible. Wow. Wow. What is my point? My mother used to say, I don't like idle people. Find yourself, don't just sit down and all of the participants in my research lost their sight as adults, 26 years, 30 years, 50 years. And they all went into anger, sadness, distress, depression, desire to commit suicide. Not all wanted to commit suicide, but one or two yeah. mentioned that. Mm -hmm. It is a very problematic thing in Finland where the blind are, they have a lot of suicide cases, particularly among the men among 50 who were leading breadwinners. But what did they do? Somehow they decided, not they alone, but they had caretakers. That's where family comes in, a brother, a sister, a father, a mother, a child with a disability should not be left alone or hidden. You have to go to that child and find ways to get that child exposed to other children and to other activities. But let's go back to the blindness thing. The, 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 the mother comes out and tells her son, you can't just lie down on the chair all day saying you're, bl you're blind. You have to get up and try something. This other girl told her mother, she's in Sacramento, California. Mom, I'm blind. I can't do anything. You see, that's because there's a low self-esteem, a low self-concept, a, 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 a profound sense of loss. No, even among sighted people, you find those characteristics. And they said, will you just, the lady from California, her mother, tell her, there's a place where they do training for persons who are blind, call them. She said, but mom, all I can do is speak Spanish. She's saying her stuff in Spanish, but she speaks English now. And her mother said, call them. And she called them and they said, she said, I, would, I am blind. I can't do anything, but I, I only speak Spanish. They said, oh, 
we have a job for a person who knows Spanish and English. Do you know a little English? They said, yes, she got a job. She became a mobility teacher. She is blind, leading the blind. She told me when she got blind, she was so angry and all of the medications just exacerbated the situation. They came and they said, let's go to church. She said, I'm not going to church. Just leave me alone. God and I have an arrangement. He leaves me alone and I leave him alone. <laughs> that is all. Fast forward today where she's saying, every time I read Jesus say that the blind cannot leave the blind, I always laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, it is, that's what I do. I encourage people to use, especially let me bring in a touch of West Indian history. We are people who came out of slavery. Look at the world that we are in today. Look at, listen to all our reggae musicians. Mm -hmm. They left us, they left us messages. Get up, stand up, lively up yourself. They left us messages that are perfect for the 21st century. My friends, perfecto. <laughs> go, back, perfect, go back and listen to all Bob Marley and Timeless, Dutch, right? and Bonnie Timeless. Oh, Timeless. Timeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all they were telling us is what is needed to do the greatest form of psychological intervention. And what were they saying? Get up and do something with your life. Why? Because your melanated self. Black people, you see, a lot of the work is with two eyes. So, for instance, I have a problem with my eyes, my optic nerve is not sending the messages to my brain. I go to the doctor, they diagnose I have glaucoma, they give me drops to put upon the surface of my eyes, it runs into my throat, it makes me feel bad. They say it reduces the pressure in the eye. But interestingly, interestingly, I go to sleep and I wake up, but I'm not awake, but I'm seeing. What am I seeing? And how am I seeing if I'm blind? In my dreams, do I see in my dreams? It's not just reggae singers, even Dominican Calypsos. But <laughs> I knew you were going to say this, but those are some of the, yes, the Dominican Calypsoans have done. Never, never give up. I always remember Hunter, you know, um, you know, it's, 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 you know, typical Dominican. Willie Chaplin, you know, you I mean just, 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 you just name it. People yeah. who speak, people who speak to people's consciousness, and, and all and those how, things. Not to cut you, but how many years ago, in Spider Song, look at how we come. And, oh, pa, pa, and, pa, pa, and, in, way, way up in the nineteen eighty, he, um, he sang about um Coney Island. Yes, yes. Coney Island, look at how we come. Yeah, that was in the eighties when Coney Island had just come into into mm -hmm. Dominica. Mm -hmm. Um, the children were on the bouncy for the first time. But I mean, the, the bouncing itself wasn't bad. It's just when they got home, what happened after that? Right. Did they go, you know, uh, um, um, and, and, and black children dream, black people dream because our eyes opened. And what opens? It's called the pineal gland in the brain. It's called the Ajna Chakra in India. It's called the mind's eye. And many of my participants spoke about the, the eye in their mind. Uh, an author like Anthony Browder tells you that there is REM sleep, REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, and it happens more in black people because we have melatonin, we have melanin. Mm. And what, what the melanin does, it, it expands, it gives us the dark color, and more than that, it is integrated into all the various segments, way into our intestine in the human body. So the black people, black people of the world, or people of color, have a tremendous capacity for expanding their imagination in the 21st century. This is our time. This is what I'm saying. No matter what you are doing, be consistent with it, stay at it. Probably some people may say, I don't like it, it doesn't pay me. You know, they say 80% of people don't like what they do, but keep on rolling, keep on trying, because the times are with you. Okay. That is Senator, my encouragement. <laughs> no, certainly, that's, and that's a good place to, to wind it down. Um, because we we are past nine o'clock, but I want to I want to give you a few moments to tell us 
what was your dissertation um the topic of your dissertation and if you can so many years of work if you can compress it into a two-minute summary <laughs> i don't know um, yeah um, i mean i hope what what i said was of value to to anybody oh, certainly who certainly it was I of mean, value to me for sure my 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 dissertation was titled active imagination well-being and ways of seeing a phenomenological inquiry into the experiences of adult learners with visual impairment so i looked at adult learners with visual impairment and what were the experiences they had and how they learn through the use of the active imagination to achieve a sense of well-being and to achieve better ways of seeing I will end on the better ways of seeing because I think it's important. Their sense of touch. Mm -hmm. I remember when you and I were discussing today, you told me Stein, um, or was it last night? <laughs> Time. Um, Stein, um, when you lose one sense, does another increase? And I've heard it said, I've heard some of my participants say they place greater emphasis. But I remember I was telling you that um, one of my participants told me if he has a coin, when it fell, when he was seeing and his coin fell, he immediately turned and he picked it up because he saw it. But now that he does not see, when his coin falls, he has to listen to hear where it's rolling and where it lands and where it stops so he can go in the general direction to pick it up. A lot happens. Um, this guy is walking home and he, 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 he knows when he smells the Starbucks he's close to the train station, he has to take five steps more and knock his cane down to the step to go down to the station. Wow, when he smells so, the Starbucks. <laughs> he smells the Starbucks. Wow. So people are using <laughs> their, 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 but, but the sense of touch, um, you, you know, just that's how you, uh, oh, my sense of, one guy in my class used to tell me, I don't want to shake your hand because when I shake your hand, you get too much in, information from me. <laughs> so there's an intensification. Now imagine somebody goes to read Braille, and when you touch the Braille, it registers in the tactile dimensions of the brain, but it also registers in the visual dimension, mm -hmm. because the visual cortex also takes up tactile information. Why? Because the brain and the parts of the brain, they love each other, they help each other when one thing goes wrong. Certainly there are structural changes. My dissertation concerned how adult learners with visual impairments were able to use that vast imagination that is now accessible to the human race. All of us. How, and how do you let them know that it is available? How are they able to use that to feel comfortable about themselves? To achieve a state of well-being, which was a state of competence. They were able to work. They were able to achieve things. They were able to have conversations to relate to others. They were able to live comfortably like everybody else, save the fact that blindness had become an annoyance and an inconvenience. But other than that, they were well. They were good people. To close it off, this participant from Florida told me, she said, Stein, I know it sounds strange, but um, I've learned to do more things now that I am blind than when I was sighted. Stein, no, Stein. This, no, go ahead, go ahead, finish that thought. There was just a question from the audience. I'll ask you when you're done. Yeah. So, yeah. And she said, when I was sighted, I was blind. <laughs> when she was sighted, she was blind. Yeah, can you put up no. the question from Tanya again, please? Go ahead, Stan. What is the question? The question is, what are your thoughts on modern mind stimulation? What would you suggest one does to continuously stimulate the mind? I, I know, I don't think this is very good counsel from me, but one colleague of mine just told me she's into psychedelics. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it is becoming a new phenomenon around the world where, because imagination has come up and it's a very good question, and imagination is emerging because Native American, Aboriginal people, people of African descent, people of Latin America and the Caribbean, they, they, they have all known those plants and stimulants and ways of meditation and ways of thinking. The mindfulness-based systems are very important. Meditational approaches, um, Maharishi International University, important. Um, 
all of the things that the Chinese people have done in terms of exercise and stretching and, and Tai Chi and all those things are important. Um, dietary practices may just be as significant. Breathing. Now, Africa is the homeland of psychology. Interestingly, I caught an original definition of psychology. And in its original sense, psychology meant the use of breath to feed the psyche. Mm. So for instance, we were told breathe in, breathe out, and we're done. But I must say, I enjoy ending on this point, if you, except if you have something else to ask me. But the breath is the first thing that a child takes in. Right. And the breath is the last thing that an adult gives up when they die. And so what we did not do as Western peoples, we took the breath for granted. We knew it ran through us. But the Eastern peoples and the peoples of African descent, they used the breath. The people of Latin America, the Aboriginal peoples, all the original peoples, they used breath in systematic ways. Our older people used to hum while they were working in their kitchen. <laughs> breath. Breath is what brings forth speech. Breath is what brings forth the language. And breath, they, they tell you if something is wrong, you can put your mind to it and breathe on it. So that is becoming one of the principles. And it is free. You don't have to pay for it. Why? Because it is inside of you. And a good note to end it. Thank you so much. And just on breath, I would recommend there's a book that I have called Breathe. Um, I don't remember the name of the author, but if you look for that book named Breathe, it talks about the use of breath to heal body conditions. Um, there was this young lady in um, Germany who had scoliosis, and she used breathing technique to straighten her spine. And, and then she opened an institution and helped quite a number of people to, to teach them to do the same. I, um, am, I am very interested in using. I continue to work at finding ways to to sort of open up the dimensions of my eyes. So that is the, that is the, those are some of the things, but it is beautiful. Yes. It is one of the most magnificent gifts and right on the breath, we, we, we have another dimension in us. I speak to us as Caribbean, West Indian, peoples of African descent in the new world, um, but all peoples in fact, right on the our skin, we, we have something called blood. And um, we have abdicated it. We have given it up to some religious institution. Anthony, it was a pleasure speaking it to you. It, it was awesome, Steinberg. Um, all conversations always go deep and and high, <laughs> uh, and so and so I find them very enjoyable, very fascinating. Yeah. We got a, a number of um, comments and commendation from the audience. I was going to say a collective thank you for for the good wishes. Um, Jali saying thank you, gentlemen, great show, very informative. Jali! Jali, yeah, of course. Um, she has new music out, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, I hear. Yeah, I don't see Jali, I think you tried to get me earlier this week, but I missed you, so we'll talk. I'll call you right after the show. First lady, I'm calling after the show. Wow. After the show. <laughs> but I want to say thank you so much. Every time you come, you know, you you bring stimulative thoughts, you bring um, stimulation. Um, DD says, say, when you breathe deeply and slowly, you activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which reverses the state, the stress response in your body. Yeah, and there's, all kind of, there's a square where you, where you breathe in for a certain amount of time, you hold it, you breathe out, you wait until you take the next breath. And it, that book that I told you about, Breathe, has a lot of a lot of um, stuff in there with, with case studies and, and all of that. So if you're interested in that, there, there are folks who train themselves to stay underwater for minutes um, just by breathing techniques and so on. And, and Anthony, I, I, I think when I, I, as you say this, I just remember, you see good old reading? Tanya mentioned stimulation of, you see good old reading? I mean, good old reading. 
it's just, I mean, I guess it's probably not. A, a book is still so very valuable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, um, re reading up comes to everything that we accomplish, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah. so we we would go on and on, but Stein, yeah. thank you so much. Let's come back. No let's problem. come back soon. Let's talk, <laughs> let's let's continue this conversation. Sure, and sure, listeners, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. I hope you find it as engaging. I hope Steinberg sharing with us his journey and the different challenges that he faced when he was organizing himself um, to to do. His, his work, um, even as someone who was visually impaired. I hope that stimulated you and motivates you where you need it. Um, and of course, the ideas that he said about being careful around children, especially up to the age of seven, where there's such formative years where their brain structure is starting to get laid down and all everything else is layered, layered on top of that. And that subconscious programming that we do to kids up to the age of seven stays with them for their entire life. And so we have to be so careful what we program our kids. Um, Stenberg, as usual, and his brilliant self, um, he described himself as a broadcast journalist, um, a media personality. He's an author, he's written books, written and published books. And now with his PhD in um, educational studies that makes him an educator. So, so good night, everyone, and thanks for for tuning in. Um, next week, uh, we have on top uh, one of these young up and coming artists who just released some uh, music, um, Samantha Moon. That's what we have on top. So, look forward to that. Um, lighter, but if you listen to her music, it's also deep. So, it, it might be a continuation of that of that meditation but but with uh with, with musical notes that makes it easier i guess to enter into our psyche so have a great week again congratulations to the dominica chess federation for their wonderful performance at the fifth annual alba games um i know there's a young man i do not catch his remember his name right now but he won he, he had a victory um in the boxing, in, in one of his boxing matches. I don't know if it's his first one, but they said that he was victorious in his match. Um, what I would say is uh, our, our, our other teams maybe kind of will do better as soon as um, we figure out our way around um, having um, a little more facilities around for them to practice. Um, with all the challenges that we have, uh, one of the areas, you know, Steinberg said, let the children play, let adults play, um, all of those um, special um, sports and movements and so on, also help in, in our thinking of our, 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 our way out of situations. All right, so congratulations, Dominica. We seem to be doing well um, in some areas um, that, 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 you know, that, that, that contributes towards that lighter, I'm lightning load. We will do this again next week, Wednesday. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, the rest of your week, a weekend, and the early part of next week. And we'll do this again next week, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on TDN Media, TDN Radio, TDN TV, our YouTube channel, Facebook pages. Have a great, great night. And thank you to our producer. Sam was not the first tonight, but. Um, DJ Kaza, um, Kazi, Kaza, uh, Kaza was the first in, in, his, in some stead, and I think he did really well. Thank you so much for stepping in and for doing an awesome job. Um, I appreciate you. That's what we do at TN. Our family is close knit and we support each other, but I, I still appreciate you being able to do that. Good night to Sam. Hope you had an enjoyable outing um, with the family. All right, folks. Bye. We'll do this again next week.